Have you ever wondered why objects always gravitate toward the ground? What allows us to walk, jump, and stand firmly on Earth? Moreover, what keeps Earth revolving around the Sun, and what maintains the orbits of celestial bodies like planets, moons, and stars around larger objects, such as the Sun or massive bodies? But that's just the beginning. Let's embark on the wonders of electricity and magnetism, the true magic that powers our homes, illuminates our cities, and brings our electronic devices to life. All these incredible phenomena are made possible by the intricate dance of charged particles, working in perfect harmony to create the technological marvels that surround us. Have you ever wondered what holds protons and neutrons within an atom's nucleus? This fundamental force is responsible for the building blocks of everything we see around us, humans, cars, stones, viruses, houses, the earth, and other planets. It is the bedrock of stability that enables the existence of our world. Beyond the visible, there resides the enigmatic weak nuclear force, a silent yet powerful force governing radioactive decay and vital natural processes. This force breathes life into stars, providing the life-giving energy that fuels our sun and sustains the existence of life as we know it. As we go about our daily lives, these remarkable fundamental forces of nature are at play, shaping our experiences and the world in ways both seen and unseen. The intricate interplay of gravity, electricity, magnetism, and nuclear forces is nothing short of astounding, forming the backbone of our understanding of the universe and its wonders. The central question remains, how do these forces come into existence? In this video, we will take an in-depth journey into these four basic forces of nature. This is the second part of our journey into the world of particle physics. If you haven't watched the first part yet, you can find it by clicking the i button above or in the description box below. To grasp the basics, let's see this chart of elementary particles. Elementary particles can be divided into two main types, elementary fermions and elementary bosons. All elementary particles fall into one of these two categories. Elementary fermions are the building blocks of matter and come in two varieties, quarks and leptons. Now, let's shift our focus to elementary bosons, which is our topic for today's video. These particles are responsible for carrying fundamental forces and facilitating interactions between other particles. They can be further divided into two groups, gauge bosons and scalar bosons. Gauge bosons have spins of either one or two, and they are linked to specific interactions. For example, photons are gauge bosons associated with electromagnetic interaction, governing phenomena such as light and electric forces. The W and Z bosons are also gauge bosons, responsible for the weak interaction that comes into play during processes like beta decay. On top of that, we have gluons, another type of gauge boson, acting as carriers of the strong interaction. This strong force binds quarks together inside protons and neutrons. Last but not least, there's the graviton, a hypothetical gauge boson associated with gravity. Gravity, as we all know, is the force responsible for the attraction between masses. As we seek answers to the most profound questions, we find that the forces of nature hold the secrets to our existence and the wonders of the cosmos. The formation of all basic forces is believed to have occurred in the early universe during the moments after the Big Bang. At that time, the universe was extremely hot and dense, causing the four forces to likely unify into a single force. All forces of nature and elementary particles were identical. However, as the universe expanded and cooled, these forces began to differentiate and behave distinctly through a process known as symmetry breaking. Our understanding of how these forces form and behave is based on theoretical models in physics, such as quantum field theory and the standard model of particle physics. Since the 1930s, physicists have realized that they can use field theory to describe the interactions between matter and the four fundamental forces. In mathematical terms, a field represents something that continuously changes across space and time. For instance, think of the magnetic field around a magnetized piece of iron, which depicts how the force strength and direction vary around the magnet. Interestingly, the fields associated with the four basic forces share a significant characteristic called gauge symmetry. In simple terms, this implies that certain changes can be made to the field without altering its fundamental structure. It also suggests that the laws governing these forces remain consistent in different regions of space and time. At the quantum level of subatomic particles, field theories exhibit an important characteristic. They describe each fundamental force as being carried by its own unique subatomic particles known as gauge bosons. These gauge bosons differ from the matter particles, fermions, in a fundamental way, as they possess integer values of the spin quantum number, whereas fermions have half-integer values of spin. 
The most familiar gauge boson is the photon, which mediates the electromagnetic force between charged objects like electrons and protons. Other gauge bosons, with different properties, are associated with the other fundamental forces. During the 1960s, physicists working on a gauge theory for the weak force discovered that the theory must also incorporate the electromagnetic force to consistently yield sensible results. This led to the development of what is now known as electroweak theory. It was a groundbreaking example of a unified field theory that connects forces that exhibit distinct manifestations in our everyday world. This unity reveals that the seemingly diverse fundamental forces are, in fact, different facets of a single underlying force. The search for a comprehensive theory that unifies all four fundamental forces, often referred to as a theory of everything, is a major objective of particle physics. It has opened up exciting avenues of research involving not only subatomic particle physics but also cosmology and astrophysics. Now, let's discuss the first of the four basic forces, gravitational force or gravity. Imagine it's the year 1600, and you find yourself sitting beneath a tree. Suddenly, an apple falls to the ground. Would you not wonder why it falls straight down instead of floating away? I cannot say if you would have pondered this, but the renowned scientist, Sir Isaac Newton, certainly did. This is how Newton discovered the concept of gravity. You may have heard this story countless times during your school days, but it is indeed a mere fairy tale. Nonetheless, this story conveys the essence of what gravity truly is. Gravity is one of the four fundamental forces of nature, and indeed, it is the weakest among them. However, its influence extends universally to all forms of mass and energy, encompassing everything from the smallest subatomic particles to the grandest celestial bodies. As I mentioned earlier, the pioneering work on understanding gravity was initiated by the English scientist Isaac Newton in the 17th century. Newton developed a quantitative description of the gravitational force, providing a fundamental framework to explain various gravitational phenomena. He proposed that the force responsible for keeping the moon in its orbit around the earth is the same force that causes objects like apples to fall to the ground, and he proposed a universal law of gravitation. Newton's universal law of gravitation states that the force, F, between two masses, m1 and m2, separated by a distance, r, is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Mathematically, it is represented as F equals G M1 M2 by R squared. In this equation, G represents the gravitational constant, which has a value of approximately 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11 newton meter square per kilogram square. It is a fundamental constant in physics that determines the strength of the gravitational force. By plugging in the respective values for the masses and distance, this equation allows us to calculate the gravitational force between two objects. It provides a quantitative description of gravity. It applies to a wide range of scenarios, from objects falling near the Earth's surface to the motion of celestial bodies in the universe. Gravity is a weak force compared to the other fundamental forces. Specifically, on the scale of atoms and subatomic particles, the effects of gravity are typically negligible in comparison to the other forces at play, such as electromagnetic or nuclear forces. However, despite its weakness at small scales, the gravitational force exhibits a unique characteristic, it has an extremely long-range effect. According to Newton's law of gravitation, the strength of the gravitational force between two bodies diminishes with distance. At a certain distance, the gravitational force becomes so weak that its effects can be considered negligible but not zero. However, this critical distance depends on the mass of the objects involved. Gravity cannot be zero. Most of the objects in the universe, no matter where they are, what they are composed of, or how large or small they are, experience the effects of gravity. Particles like photons are not influenced by gravity because they have no rest mass. Consequently, even though gravity is weak, the gravitational effects of large and massive objects can be substantial, even at vast distances where the other forces have diminished significantly. For instance, the gravitational force exerted by Earth is responsible for keeping the Moon in orbit at a distance of approximately 384,400 kilometers. This showcases how gravity can act over immense distances and have significant consequences for celestial bodies. Newton's theory of gravity, while successful in many practical applications, was later refined by Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, developed in 1915. 
General relativity incorporates the concept of gauge symmetry and introduces subtle corrections to the Newtonian understanding of gravity. According to Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, gravity is not considered a force in the traditional sense as described by Newton's law of universal gravitation. In Einstein's theory, gravity is understood as the curvature of spacetime caused by the presence of mass and energy. In general relativity, massive objects like planets, stars, and galaxies curve the fabric of spacetime around them. Other objects, including light and smaller bodies, follow paths determined by this curved spacetime geometry. This curvature is what we perceive as the force of gravity, causing objects to move on curved trajectories as if being pulled toward the massive object. However, this apparent force is a consequence of the geometry of spacetime rather than an actual force acting at a distance, as described by Newton's law. Einstein's general relativity has been very successful in explaining gravitational phenomena and has been confirmed through numerous experiments and observations. It is now considered the modern theory of gravity and has replaced Newtonian gravity for most astronomical and cosmological phenomena. It is important to note that general relativity is a classical theory and does not incorporate the principles of quantum mechanics, which govern the behavior of particles at the subatomic level. In the framework of quantum mechanics, gravity is treated as a fundamental force, similar to electromagnetic, strong nuclear, and weak nuclear forces. However, achieving a consistent and complete theory of quantum gravity, which unifies general relativity in quantum mechanics, remains one of the most significant challenges in modern theoretical physics. The development of a quantum theory of gravity is an ongoing challenge in theoretical physics. In such a theory, the gravitational force would be mediated by a suitable messenger particle. To date, a fully workable quantum theory of gravity has not been achieved. However, certain properties of a hypothesized force particle of gravity, called the graviton, can be inferred from general relativity. According to these inferences, the graviton would have a spin quantum number of 2 and would not possess mass but only energy. These insights suggest that the graviton, if it exists, would have characteristics distinct from other particles. It would play a fundamental role in a quantum theory of gravity, carrying the gravitational force between particles in a manner analogous to how photons mediate electromagnetic force. However, it is important to note that the graviton remains a theoretical concept, and its direct experimental detection has yet to be achieved. Electromagnetic force. The electromagnetic force is another fundamental force of nature that is stronger than the weak nuclear force and gravity but not as potent as the strong nuclear force. Its discovery took place in the 18th century, representing a significant milestone in our comprehension of the natural world. In the 18th century, the French physicist Charles Coulomb made significant contributions to the understanding of the electromagnetic force. Coulomb's work laid the foundation for our understanding of the electrostatic force between electrically charged objects. Coulomb's law, analogous to Newton's law of gravitation, describes the relationship between the electrostatic force, F, and the charges, Q1 and Q2, of two objects. According to Coulomb's law, the force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of their charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance, R, between them. Mathematically, this can be expressed as F equals K Q1 times Q2 by R squared. In this equation, K is the proportionality constant, which depends on the medium in which the charges are located. In the case of free space, K is equal to 1 by 4 epsilon naught, where epsilon naught represents the permittivity of free space. An important aspect of Coulomb's law is that the electrostatic force can be either attractive or repulsive. This is due to the existence of two forms of electric charge, positive and negative. Opposite charges, one positive and one negative, attract each other, while like charges, both positive or both negative, repel each other. Coulomb also extended his findings to the force between magnetized bodies. He observed that the force between magnetic poles follows a similar inverse square relationship as the electrostatic force. Magnetism and electricity are not separate phenomena but rather interconnected manifestations of the underlying electromagnetic force. This relationship was established through various experiments conducted in the early 19th century by scientists such as Hans Ørsted, André-Marie Ampere, and Michael Faraday. These experiments revealed the close connection between electricity and magnetism, demonstrating how one can give rise to the other. For instance, Ørsted's experiment showed that an electric current produces a magnetic field, while Faraday's work demonstrated how changing magnetic fields induce an electric current. 
Ampere's experiments further contributed to understanding the quantitative aspects of the interaction between electricity and magnetism. In the 1850s, the Scottish physicist James Clerk Maxwell synthesized the findings of these experiments into a comprehensive theory known as electromagnetic theory or Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's theory provided a mathematical framework that unified electricity and magnetism into a single set of equations. One of the remarkable predictions of Maxwell's theory was the existence of electromagnetic waves. Maxwell's equations indicated that intertwined electric and magnetic fields could propagate through space as waves, traveling at the velocity of light. These electromagnetic waves were later confirmed experimentally and identified as light itself, leading to the understanding that light is an electromagnetic wave. Maxwell's electromagnetic theory laid the foundation for our modern understanding of electromagnetism and provided a framework to explain and predict a wide range of phenomena related to electricity, magnetism, and light. It established the concept of electromagnetic waves, highlighting the profound connection between electric and magnetic fields and their role in the transmission of energy through space. At the turn of the 20th century, the work of Max Planck in Germany on blackbody radiation led to the revolutionary concept of quantization and the discovery of photons. Planck explained the spectrum of radiation emitted by a perfect emitter, known as blackbody radiation. This work laid the foundation for the concept of quantization, which suggests that energy is exchanged in discrete packets rather than being continuous. The concept of quantization and the discovery of photons through Max Planck's work led to the development of quantum electrodynamics, which describes the electromagnetic force in terms of quantized particles and their interactions. The photon, with its properties of zero mass, spin 1, and no electric charge, serves as the gauge boson mediating the electromagnetic interactions between charged particles. In the quantum picture, electromagnetic radiation exhibits a dual nature, existing both as waves described by Maxwell's classical theory and as streams of particles known as photons. Photons are the fundamental particles associated with electromagnetic radiation in the quantum framework. The understanding of electromagnetic radiation in quantum terms is encapsulated in the theory of quantum electrodynamics, QED, which is the quantum field theory describing the electromagnetic force. QED combines quantum mechanics with special relativity to explain the behavior of charged particles and their interactions with photons. Both classical electromagnetism, described by Maxwell's equations, and its quantized version in QED exhibit gauge symmetry, which has emerged as a fundamental aspect of the fundamental forces. Gauge symmetry refers to the invariance of a physical theory under certain transformations. In terms of relative strength, the electromagnetic force is intrinsically much stronger than the gravitational force. If we set the relative strength of the electromagnetic force between two protons separated within the nucleus to one, the strength of the gravitational force would be extremely weak, approximately 10 to the power of negative 36 times smaller. At the atomic level, the electromagnetic force dominates and governs the behavior of charged particles. Gravity, on the other hand, becomes more significant on a larger scale due to the cumulative effect of matter, which is electrically neutral as a whole. The gauge boson associated with the electromagnetic force is the photon. It's important to note that photons themselves do not experience the electromagnetic force since they have no electric charge. Additionally, photons cannot directly interact with other photons. However, photons do carry energy and momentum, and through these properties, they transmit the effects of electromagnetism between particles. In these processes, energy and momentum are conserved overall, adhering to the fundamental laws of physics. However, at the precise moment when one particle emits a photon and another particle absorbs it, energy conservation appears to be temporarily violated. This intriguing phenomenon is permitted by the principles of quantum mechanics, particularly Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, introduced by the German scientist Werner Heisenberg in 1927. According to Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, it is fundamentally impossible to know all the precise details about a specific quantum system simultaneously. For example, if the exact position of an electron is determined, the certainty of its momentum becomes uncertain. This inherent uncertainty enables a fleeting disparity in energy, delta E, to exist for a brief duration, delta T. The energy of the emitted photon can be viewed as borrowed within the confines of the uncertainty principle. The concept of virtual photons emerges, distinguished from real photons that constitute electromagnetic radiation and can persist indefinitely. 
Virtual photons act as intermediaries in these processes, borrowing energy temporarily, and their existence is contingent on adhering to the limits imposed by the uncertainty principle. The greater the amount of energy borrowed, the shorter the duration of the loan. This concept of virtual particles operating within the constraints of the uncertainty principle extends to the exchange of other gauge bosons as well, contributing to our understanding of the intricate world of quantum interactions. The electromagnetic force is an essential and versatile aspect of modern life and technology. It enables power generation, motors, transformers, and various industrial applications through electromagnets. Additionally, it facilitates information transmission in electronics and telecommunications, using electromagnetic waves for communication and medical imaging. From magnetic storage to maglev trains, electromagnetic forces impact diverse fields, including scientific research and medicine with particle accelerators and MRI technology. Weak Nuclear Force In 1933, Enrico Fermi proposed the first theory of weak interaction, known as Fermi's interaction. Since then, physicists have recognized the existence of the weak force as a separate force that is responsible for certain types of radioactivity, specifically beta decay. The weak force is distinct from the strong force, which binds quarks together within the nucleus. The weak force is weaker than the electromagnetic force but stronger than the gravitational force in everyday situations. However, its range is very short. The large masses of the W and Z bosons require significant energy, and the uncertainty principle limits the duration of borrowing a weak gauge boson. As a result, the weak force's range is limited to distances less than 10 to the power of negative 17 meters. The strength of the weak force is about 10 to the power of negative 7, that of the electromagnetic force between two protons in a nucleus. However, at higher energies approaching 100 GeV, approximately the mass of the W and Z bosons, the weak force becomes comparable in strength to the electromagnetic force. This means that reactions that involve the exchange of a Z0 become as common as those in which a photon is exchanged. At these energies, real W and Z bosons can be created in reactions, rather than just virtual particles, unlike the photon, which is stable and can exist indefinitely. The heavy weak gauge bosons, W and Z bosons, have a very short lifetime. They decay into lighter particles within an extremely brief time span of approximately 10 to the power of negative 25 seconds. Although this timescale is much shorter than what can be directly measured in experiments, physicists can indirectly infer the existence of the W and Z bosons by detecting the particles into which they decay. The violation of parity, handedness of spins, in weak interactions was suggested by Chen Ning Yang and Tsung Dao Li in the mid-1950s. Violation of parity, also known as parity violation, refers to a phenomenon in particle physics where certain fundamental interactions do not exhibit symmetry under spatial inversion. In simpler terms, it means that the laws of physics do not behave the same way when you flip the coordinates in a mirror. If the laws of physics are symmetric under this transformation, the system is said to possess parity symmetry, or even parity. If the laws of physics change sign under this transformation, the system is said to violate parity symmetry, exhibiting parity violation or odd parity. Historically, parity violation was first observed in weak interactions. Before its discovery, physicists believed that all fundamental interactions should exhibit parity symmetry. However, in 1956, Qianxin Wu and her collaborators performed an experiment that demonstrated the violation of parity in the weak interaction during beta decay of cobalt-60 nuclei. They found that the electrons emitted in the beta decay were preferentially emitted in a particular direction, breaking the mirror symmetry. This discovery was significant because it showed that the weak force behaves differently from electromagnetism, a force that exhibits parity symmetry, and led to a deeper understanding of the fundamental forces in nature. The violation of parity in weak interactions played a crucial role in the development of the electroweak theory, which unifies the weak force with electromagnetism under the same theoretical framework, the electroweak theory, unifying the electromagnetic force and the weak interaction, was developed by Sheldon Glashow, Abdus Salam, and Steven Weinberg in the 1960s. It brought together these two fundamental forces under a single framework, and it was a significant achievement in particle physics. Scientists used to think of these forces as separate things. But then they made an exciting discovery. They found out that these two forces are actually related and are just different parts of a more powerful force called the electroweak force. The proper gauge field theory for the weak force is known as electroweak theory, which combines the quantum field theory of electromagnetism with the weak force. 
It's like how we used to think that electricity and magnetism were separate, but we now know they are part of the same electromagnetic force. Similarly, the weak force and the electromagnetic force are like different sides of the same coin, the electroweak force. The electroweak theory involves four gauge bosons. One of them is the photon, associated with electromagnetism, while the other three are associated with the weak force. The weak gauge bosons include two charged versions, W plus W minus, and a neutral version, Z0. Like the photon, the W and Z particles have a spin quantum number of 1. Unlike the massless photons, the W and Z bosons are very massive. The W bosons have a mass of approximately 80.4 GeV, and the Z boson has a mass of 91.187 GeV. In comparison, the mass of a proton is about 0.94 GeV, or about one hundredth that of the Z particle. Strictly speaking, the mass should be given in units of energy by C square, where C is the velocity of light. However, common practice is to set C equals 1 so that mass is quoted simply in units of energy, the charged W bosons play a role in processes such as beta decay, where particles undergo a change in charge. For instance, during neutron beta decay, a neutron emits a W boson, resulting in the transformation of the neutron into a proton. The W boson involved in this process is a virtual particle with a short existence due to its high mass. It quickly transforms into an electron and an antineutrino, which are observed as the products of beta decay. Experimental observations allow scientists to study the decay products of the W and Z bosons, such as electrons, positrons, neutrinos, and their antiparticles. By examining these particles and their properties, researchers can deduce the existence of the W and Z bosons and study their behavior, despite their fleeting lifetimes. Through high-energy particle collisions and experiments conducted at particle accelerators, physicists have successfully measured and studied the properties of these decay products, providing evidence for the existence and behavior of the W and Z bosons. Strong Nuclear Force The discovery of the neutron by James Chadwick in 1932 was a significant milestone for nuclear physics. It completed the understanding of atomic nuclei, which were previously known to consist of protons and electrons. With the neutron's discovery, scientists realized that the atomic nucleus is composed of both protons and neutrons, and the strong nuclear force is the force that holds these particles together. Shortly after the discovery of the neutron by James Chadwick in 1932, scientists like Werner Heisenberg and Dmitry Ivanenko proposed proton-neutron models for the atomic nucleus. In 1935, Hideki Yukawa, a Japanese physicist, proposed the idea of mesons as the carriers of the strong force. He suggested that mesons mediate the interaction between protons and neutrons, effectively binding them together in the nucleus. In 1947, the first meson, pi meson or pi on, was discovered experimentally, confirming Yukawa's theoretical predictions. The strong force, as its name suggests, is the strongest of all the fundamental interactions in nature. It is short-ranged, which means it is effective only over very tiny distances, around the size of atomic nuclei, about 10 to the power of negative 15 meters or so. Beyond these nuclear distances, its influence diminishes rapidly, making it relatively weak compared to the other forces at larger scales. But within the nucleus of an atom, and even more specifically within the protons and other particles made up of quarks, the strong force reigns supreme. It dominates the interactions between quarks, which are the fundamental building blocks of protons and neutrons. In fact, within a proton, the strong force between quarks can be up to almost 100 times stronger than the electromagnetic force, which is responsible for interactions between charged particles. The strength of the strong force between quarks depends on the distance between them. At very short distances, it becomes incredibly powerful, leading to the confinement of quarks within protons and other composite particles. The unique properties of the strong force within the nucleus play a critical role in keeping atomic nuclei stable despite the repulsive electromagnetic force between positively charged protons. In the 1970s, physicists developed a theory known as quantum chromodynamics QCD, to describe the strong force. Quantum chromodynamics is similar in structure to quantum electrodynamics QED, which describes the electromagnetic force. In quantum chromodynamics, quarks are the elementary particles that make up protons, neutrons, and other particles. Quarks are bound together by exchanging massless gauge bosons called gluons. Quarks carry a property called color, not related to visual color, which is analogous to electric charge in quantum electrodynamics. 
Just as electrically charged particles experience the electromagnetic force and exchange photons, quarks, which carry color charge, feel the strong force and exchange gluons. The term chromodynamics in quantum chromodynamics refers to the dynamics of color charges. Unlike photons, which do not interact with each other due to their lack of electric charge, gluons carry color charge and can interact with other gluons. This self-interaction of gluons has a profound effect on the behavior of the strong force, confining quarks within particles such as protons and preventing the observation of isolated quarks or free gluons. There are three types of color charge, red, green, and blue, again, with no relation to visual colors. Quarks carry a single color charge, while gluons carry a combination of color and anti-color charges. The strong force acts in such a way that quarks of different colors are attracted to each other, while quarks of the same color repel each other. To achieve a net color charge of zero, quarks combine in specific ways. For example, in particles containing three quarks, such as protons, one each of red, blue, and green colors is combined. In mesons, particles composed of a quark-antiquark pair, the color and anti-color charges cancel each other out. The nature of the strong force prevents the direct observation of single quarks or free gluons. Quarks, even though they can radiate real gluons, do not appear in isolation. Instead, they create additional gluons, quarks, and antiquarks from their energy, materializing as particles made of quarks. The strong force also keeps quarks confined within larger particles. Attempts to knock quarks out of protons, for instance, result in the creation of new particles and the release of bound quarks and antiquarks. The confinement of quarks and the inability to observe free quarks or gluons are consequences of the fundamental properties of the strong force. What fundamental factor is accountable for the existence of mass throughout the universe? In the realm of particle physics, what gives a substance its mass? How do particles acquire their mass, allowing them to form the structures we observe in the cosmos? That's the next one.